Welcome to the Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together, we are the The Traveling Traveling Professors. Professors. Today, Sherry and I, in show number 63, will go back to Amboise, the Chateau, for part two, which is the Orleans section, and then our tour of the garden, and several of the main towers. And I will also be talking about how we end up with different clients owning the property, and particularly how do the Orleans family end up with it. So let's begin. When we left off the last time, we had gone through the front of the chateau, which was, of course, the Renaissance section. Today we're going to go through the rest of the chateau and the Orleans wing. So how in the world did the Orleans end up with it in the end? Well, after the death of Charles VIII in 1498, It was taken over by Louis de Orléans, who became Louis XII, and at one point was married to Valois, his first wife, and a Brittany, his second wife, and Mary Tudor, his third wife. On his death, Francis I, and that is, of course, the Valois-Anglumé generation. So you have Francis I, you have Henry II, Francis II, Charles IX, Henry III. And really, after Henry III, all the way up until the French Revolution, for the most part, the other kings, Louis XIII, XIV, XV, XV, they really don't come by here very often. As a matter of fact, the building becomes somewhat of a prison, and then just kind of went into disrepair. It was purchased in 1786 by the Duc de Pontevere, that's Louis XVI's cousin, And, of course, in 1789, then the French government takes it over. And during that French Revolution, you have the member of the Orléans family who, on the death of Louis XVI, would have become king, who is Philippe Egalité. But he was actually, and he's executed during the Revolution. So after Napoleon gives it away, and the government takes it back again, it is then returned to the Duc de Pontivert's sole heir, which is Louis-Marie Adeline de Bourbon. She's the Duchess of Orléans and the widow of Philippe Galité. And then their family continues using it. Well, here's our trusty model. So we're going into this building right here. And then on the ground level, there's the backside of the Amboise Chateau. We entered right in here for the Renaissance period section. And then we're going to come out and go into this wing over here, which I call the Orléans section. So when we left off in the Renaissance, we were in the cloakroom here, and we go out through the cloakroom, where the door is down here at the end, and we come into what is known as the Orleans or Pentevere cabinet. Now this houses a succession of late 18th century portraits showing the maternal grandfather and the parents of the future French king, Louis-Philippe I. You have this portrait, which you can't see very well right at the very end here, That's the Grand Admiral of the Kingdom, Louis-Jean-Marie de Bourbon, Duc de Pontevere, lived from 1725 to 93, and he's the son of the Count of Toulouse and Louis XIV's grandson. Now, in this picture, you will also see this is a portrait of Adelaide de Bourbon de Pontevere, the Duchess de Orléans, the widow of Louis-Philippe Joseph de Orléans, the Philippe Galité, and she inherited the chateau after her husband was executed. And that's a portrait by Lebrun. Now you notice that it has these two beautiful little chairs next to the fireplace. Well, those are 18th century Chinon Soiree decorations, and they're signed by Boulard. And here's a close-up of one of the two chairs. Then if we look at the other part of the room, you'll see this beautiful bronze bust in the corner. That's Louis the 18th. 1815 to 1824, and then the portrait on the wall, that is, of course, that's the portrait of Louis-Philippe Joseph de Orléans, Philippe Calité. And then you see the little table with the chairs. Now, a closer view of those chairs, they're just simply known as Louis-Philippe chairs. The next room that we come into is the Orléans bedroom. Can't miss that, can you? The beautiful Empire-style sleigh bed. Now, here's a nice view of it, just a little closer up. The little baby cradle. And then if you look from the other side of the room, you'll see the portrait on the wall. That, of course, is Louis-Philippe the I, who is king during what is known as the July Monarchy. And there's a closer view of the portrait. On one of the other walls, you have this painting by Varent, 
and it is Louis Philippe and his sons leaving Versailles on June the 10th, 1873. The next room is actually divided into two parts. It's an open room. It's a very large room. One side of the room is known as the music room and the souvenirs of the Orleans, and the other side of the room is known as the souvenirs of Emir Ibn al-Qadir. So we're going to look at the music room Orleans souvenirs first. And so I'm actually taking this picture that you see here from right at the edge of where the other material souvenirs of Kadir are behind me. You look at the whole room and you can obviously see the musical instruments as a gaming table and several portraits. So let's look at them a little closer. This portrait, you see right here, this is a portrait of Francis de Orleans, 1818-1900, the Prince de Joinville, the third son of Louis-Philippe I and Marie Amélie of Bourbon, Sicilies. Now I would point out that the Prince de Joinville is a very important part to play in history. He is the representative of the throne who on the Belle Poulet led the expedition to St. Helena in 1840 to exhume the body of Napoleon and bring it back to France. And this case that you see is the model of the Belle Poulet, which is the ship that was the flagship of the group of French ships that went to pick up Napoleon, and where the Prince of the Jeanville, as well as Napoleon, stayed on the journey. Now, if we look at the music section picture here, well, you see this beautiful piano. That is an Erard Rio Rosewood Grand Piano from the 1800s. The harp is actually an Aarond harp from the 18th century. The portrait up against the wall in the back is Queen Marie Adeline, which is Louis Philippe's wife, and two of her sons, the Duc de Aumal and the Duc de Montpessier. And then here's a closer view of the, of the harp, which again is an Erard harp. The two busts that you see are busts of Queen Marie Amélie and Adelaide, the king's sister. And then there's a nice empire-style chaise lounge. And then we come to the gaming table, which is sometimes in the other room. I've, it, the first time we were there, it was in the other room. So they moved the furniture around a little bit. Now the back side of the music room has what is known as the souvenirs of the Emir Abd al-Qadir. Now after Louis Philippe I was exiled, properties were confiscated from the Orleans family by the Republic Provisional Government in 1848. The chateau was now put at the disposal of the Ministry of War, which at the time was seeking a suitable resident for the state prisoner, Emir Abd al-Qadir, who stayed there with his retinue from November of 1848 until October of 1852. He was a revolutionary who was fighting the French takeover of Algeria and had been placed here along with his little retinue. So what you see in this picture, besides the fireplace, there are some photographs. There's a photograph of, of al Qadir, and then on the wall, this is the portrait of General Henri de Orleans, the Duc de Amal, who was the gentleman responsible for the success of the French in Algeria, something they would regret later, and the capture of al Qadir. And that painting is painted by Leon Bonnat. And when we go out into the end of the garden, there's a very poignant spot there that also goes along with the imprisonment of Al Qadir. But he was freed by Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon III, in 1852. Surprise! You thought you were going to get through a whole presentation without seeing this chart. Well, you're wrong. We just left the palace, and now we're going to come up into this area up here where the garden is. So you see this tower, which is still in existence, the Mimes Tower, which is one of two towers where you could actually ride horses up and get up here to the top. Excellent fortifications, but we're just going to be on the roof of it at this point. So here we are. This is where you come out of the chateau onto the Mimes Tower, the top part of it, which, of course, is 80 meters above the Loire River. And then here is the top portion of it looking out. And then if you look back, you can see the front of the Renaissance portion of the chateau. And I would point out that in this picture, you can see all these different rails and what have you. And in 1560, there was a plot to kidnap Francis II, and it was foiled. And some of the people, after they were found guilty, were actually hanged from the balconies up here in the area where the guard walk was located. But here's a nice view that you can see down to ground level. You see where the village is. And then here's another view where you can go and you can see the church. And of course, I have to show you the bridge again. And then the area over here is where the balloon flight took off. 
Now, if you walk to the other side of it, you'll notice that the sun has suddenly dimmed. That's because when we were here the first time, of course, it was raining and it was cloudy. And we didn't retake those pictures when we came the second time. So when you see the sun dim in a few pictures, that's because the only way I could show you those is to use some of my older pictures. So here's a view from the Mimez Tower looking the other direction. And you can see the fortifications. And then here is the sad little garden. Now remember this was originally a Renaissance garden. Well, then it was all pulled up. And then they turned it into the whole garden structure at Amboise now is an English style garden. So after being up here in the top of the Mimez Tower, we need to get down the ground level with the garden. So we go over here to the, to the doorway. And we are now going to go down... So what we'll be doing is we go, we'll be going down this ramp to the next level. But the ramp was originally placed in here when the tower was built under Charles VIII. So we get to the door, and there's the little chart showing the different levels. We're only going to go down. You can't go completely out of it. They, they bring you out at the, at the guard walkway is what they do. So anyway, we go down the steps, and of course these are these wonderful medieval tower steps. So if you make a mistake, you just keep on rolling. And so here's Sherry coming around the bend. And then as we come out, here is the little fence that we saw when we were just coming in in the last show on the guard's walkway. So here we are on the other side of the fence looking at the guard's walkway. But if you keep on going to the next door, we have to go down a little bit more. And then we come to the actual Mimez Tower piece of it. This is where the horses could go and maneuver around quickly and go up and down. So we are going to go up a little bit. And you can see the windows, the roofing, and then you have the little bump outs, which you would have. Well, they use the towers as prisons, so that's why you see these bars here, but it keeps you from jumping. And ultimately, we go up, I think we made two circles, and then there is the exit. And when you come out on the exit, here's the little porch area, and then you look out, and we are now on the garden level. And as far as we're concerned on the chart, we are right in here. But let's use the little chart that came with the guidebook. Here we are, right there. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go to the end, and then we're going to walk up here to the old gate, and then we'll walk over here to the memorial to Al-Qadir's people, and then we'll ultimately head down to the Aralt Tower, which is a tower that is not only wide enough that you could bring horsemen up, but you could bring wagons as well. And that's how we'll exit the facility. This is a view of the backside of the chateau. Here we are almost all the way down, uh, looking back. I and mean, they've got some covering. They're, they're going to be putting in some flowers. This is the back of the of the wall, the fortifications. And there's the, the angry trees, as I call them. And one of the things that they have out under this garden area is they have a nice little frame. And then you get in the picture, and then you can take a, a framed picture. They have these all over the place. Just about everywhere you go with a Chateau France, they'll have these. So on the left-hand side is Sherry when we were here in 2016. And that's when it was cloudy and rainy. And as you can see, the sun came out in 2021, and we got a nice picture. The funniest thing is we did this at another Chateau where they have a large frame. And Jerry was getting into it to, for me to take her picture. And this group of middle school kids all crowded in. They have their middle school picture. And so they'll all be surprised when their middle school school picture shows this redhead in the corner of their, of their classroom. <laughs> then you start heading to the main gate. Or I should say the back gate. And we have all these rounded shrubs. And then here's the back gate. And you get close enough to it and you can... You can shoot through it. This is another way in which you could have come up to the castle. It's a lot harder. It was actually easier to, for people to come up using the two towers than to go all the way around, climb up, and come in. But then here's the back wall, back fortification. Now, in the back corner of the garden, along this wall, you see these markers. Now, this is a monument to the memory of the members of Al-Qadir's household. Remember, there were 80 people, including his family, that was with him, who died at Amboise while they were imprisoned. Called the Jardin d'Orient, the Garden of the East, and it is in the upper part of the Chateau grounds. And there is a dedicated monument here. So when you get a little closer, you can see the little tombstones to each member. 
And then here is the, the marker, and the slabs give the lists of the people and what position they held in the family or in the court. Well, it's time to exit. We're almost finished. So we're going to head from the little garden area with Al-Qadir's people to the Aralt Tower, which is a circular tower which goes all the way down to the street level. And that's how they brought supplies in. So we'll take a little circle and shoot some pictures and then go down the tower. So here we are approaching the Aralt Tower. Coming in from one side, there's your view. This is where we came in, the St. Hebert Church. And then we start walking around. Now, you can't, they won't let you in at this top part. So here's the view looking down, and you can see that the wall and the fortification with the town. And there's a shot looking back at the backside of the chateau. And then here's the rest of the town scattered around. And then turning, you get to see the other fortifications, the whole system. There, the, there are walls that go much further along in here. And then as we come back around, you see this little garden area. Well, this it's kind of hard to have an orient garden without water and a tree of Lebanon. So there's a planted a Lebanese tree, and that has a little pond. So here is the tree today, grown quite a bit. And here's the view of the chateau from that park area where they have the little water feature. So once we did that, it's time to go down. So we go in the entrance, we should say the exit, to the Aralt Tower. I'm looking up. If we were to go up one more level, that's what you would do, but you, they won't let you do that. So now we're going down, and it's very wide. But you can, uh, they got little bump outs periodically for lighting. Here's Sherry standing back where we came in, so you get an idea of the of the level. And we'll just make three circles or so down, and then there's the exit. And once you get on the outside, that's what it looked like on the exterior. That's the bottom part of it, and that's the view up at the top. And as you can see, it originally had a bridge across it. This probably had a little moat around it as well at some point. And then walking back through the village, there's the, the tower from the side. Now, if you went up the street on the right-hand side of this picture, you'll end up going to Claude Luce, where Leonardo da Vinci lived. And then, of course, there's a, a view of the Aralt Tower just standing there in that monstrous fortification. Well, we can't leave Amboise yet because Sherry has a need for some coffee. So we found a little coffee shop not too far from where we exited the Aralt Tower. And you went in, and here's one of the sections where you could sit and drink your coffee. But we opted to go out back into the garden area and just have a nice, relaxing cup of coffee. And then once we were finished with that, we then went across the street to our favorite souvenir shop. Every time we've been in Amboise, we've bought stuff for the kids and for ourselves, and they've always been really fun. And then it's time to go back to the train station and head back to Anzane. So there's the goodbye to Amboise and the Loire River, and Sherry and I certainly hope you enjoyed our show. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packett. And please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I've been doing podcasting on history for over 15 years. I've got over 4,000 shows, and I've done CDs, which, of course, can be sent out as USBs. So if you would really like to get more on history for free, then come by my website, as you see here, historyaccordingtobob.com, and see what's there. So thank you very much again.